Anatomy is a gateway science. Once you start learning it, you can't help but start asking questions that will lead you to other aspects of human biology. So for instance, anatomy is the what? This is my nose. This is the external ears, right? The liver is in the right upper quadrant. It produces bile. That is human anatomy. You're basically pointing at something, outlining it, you know, pulling it out, looking at it and asking, what does it do? Right? It's a, it's a, it's a science of classification. However, you can only kind of stay in that domain for so long before you're going to ask, well, okay, well, how does it do it? And that's physiology, right? Physiology is the function. It's how things work. So it's not enough to just say, okay, the liver produces bile. How does it produce bile? Right? And physiology can get very nuanced. It's very tedious. It's not an easy science to learn, but I mean, hey, that's how the world works. You are looking at a very microscopic level to figure out how things work. It's physiology. But then from there, you might start wondering, well, then how is it supposed to move? Right, so I, I know what the body is built of. I know how it does these things, but how is it supposed to move, right? This is where you're learning kinesiology, right? The study of movement. So this is where you're learning about muscles and tendons and just, I mean, essentially it's exercise science. Who knew that, you know, you start learning anatomy and all of a sudden you find yourself primed to learn exercise science. Again, look, are you becoming an exercise scientist? No, but you can see how it's just like this logical progression. And shortly thereafter, you're going to start asking, okay, well, I know how it moves and why it moves that way. And all. how do I fuel it? What is the optimal fuel? Or is there even an optimal fuel? And this leads you to nutritional science. Again, you're not training to become a nutritionist or a dietitian. Instead, you're just asking the most logical question, right? The next question in the sequence. Wow. <laughs> How do I make this anatomy work better? And that's nutrition. And then from there, you might be wondering, well, you know, how, what if things go wrong? What if it breaks? What if I have some genetic condition, right? Uh, you know, you start to look in disease, dysfunction, disorder, and you start to learn pathology, right? If anatomy is how you build a body, pathology is how it falls apart. And again, you are not training to become a physician, right? You're not training to become a pathologist. But at the same time, understanding how disease and dysfunction work, well, the only way to do that is if you understand the anatomy and the physiology to some extent before it. Otherwise, what's happening is you're learning something out of context. Context really matters. And I mean, we can keep on going with this context, by the way, right? If you start asking then, okay, well, then how did it even begin? Right, so like for instance, this is the pectoralis major muscle and it's on the chest. It's a massive muscle on the chest and yet it doesn't move the chest. It moves your upper limbs, right? Pectoralis major flexes the shoulder. It adducts the shoulder. It medially or internally rotates the shoulder. It moves your upper limb. Why is it even on the chest? Same goes for trapezius. Same goes for latissimus dorsi. Well, if you want to understand how leverage works, obviously kinesiology is going to help, but if you're actually wanting to understand why and how it's there, that's where you learn embryology, right? In utero development. And then you can even go way before that, start asking, okay, but like, why though? Like, why is it this way? And you start to learn about human evolution, right? Homo habilis, homo naledi, uh, you know, uh, Australopithecus. You're starting to go into paleoanthropology. You can just keep on going and adding more context. And by the way, I'm not saying you need to know any of this. However, to address specific questions you may have, context is important. And so you may need to. And the only way I have found to sufficiently do that is to learn your human anatomy. You see, what it does is it creates a sense of personal accountability. There's only so much BSing you can do for yourself once you have the knowledge of how it should be working and how you yourself can be doing better. So for instance, it's not like, I'm not sitting here pretending I'm perfect. However, when I decide to eat poorly, I am very aware of what that is doing to my body. If I decide to act poorly or not work out or do those types of things, I'm very understanding of what I'm doing to my body. There's a greater sense of personal accountability. 
However, it also makes it easier for me to ask the right questions when I have specific, uh, you know, uh, questions, right? Like, so for example, you know, a lot of the problems I've seen when it comes to influencers, and I'm saying this very broadly, I'm not trying to highlight anybody and single them out, but one of the biggest issues I've seen in the community of influencers in terms of like help is that they are trying to answer these questions without that context. So for instance, say like you're trying to learn about the vegan diet, um, or the carnivore diet, right? Polar opposites, but you have the exact same problem at its core. When you look into the influencers who understand it, the problem is they are missing a huge amount of context. They don't understand enough about the, the human anatomy, human physiology, just human biology in general to really give you the why, the how, the when, the where, all of those essential components to a proper answer. And that, in my estimation, is a problem. Now, at the same time, I'm sure you can think of influencers, which I would argue are probably not even really influencers, but those who do understand that context, right? I want you to think, even if you don't really know a lot of health influencers or fitness influencers off the top of your head, try to think of one that is good at what they do. Chances are they understand their human anatomy, their kinesiology, right? They understand these things. They understand the context at such a high level that it's easy to kind of like do this, right? It's easy to answer these questions that you have, right? I've been teaching human anatomy, physiology, nutrition, kinesiology for nearly 15 years now. And this is not to toot my own horn, but one of the most common um, things that are told me by my students is, man, Justin, you know everything. And it's, I really don't. I just understand the context with, in which the question you're asking can be answered. What I have found over the years is that most of the questions that my students and therefore probably most people have are answerable if you understand enough about human anatomy and physiology. It's, it's amazing how we think a lot of these answers are eluding us or they are only there for the experts. And in reality, you just need a little bit more context and you can answer it yourself. This, this is the power of human anatomy. This is why I'm so passionate about teaching human anatomy. Now you might be wondering, Justin, how is this going to change my life? Well, there's another very important aspect to understanding your anatomy that I don't see anyone ever talking about. And I think the reason they don't talk about it is because it goes counter to how we would historically and classically talk about anatomy. You see, most would say that anatomy is inherently a reductionist science. And what that means, it's kind of like what I've been talking about, right? Like you have this part, you, you look at it, you say, oh, look at this cool part I got. Oh, look, I got this other part. That's pretty cool. How do they interact with each other? That's, that's pretty much it, right? That is anatomy. However, I don't really view anatomy in this way anymore. I view it as more of a systems approach. Right? So if you've ever taken a biology class, there's a good chance you've run into what's called the hierarchy of life or the hierarchy of design. And the idea is very simple, right? You have like, you have atoms, then you have molecules, and then you have cells, then you have tissues, then you have organs, organ systems, and finally you have an organism, right? You see this stratification of life. And you're starting with something that is not really living, right? No one would say a carbon atom is alive. However, carbon atoms are essential to life. I mean, they just think about carbon-based life forms. So the point I'm trying to make here is we teach this in the intro class, right? Intro to anatomy, intro to biology. We talk about the hierarchy of life and then we forget it, right? We, um, we basically just say, oh, that's not important anymore. Let's just go right to the parts. And what I've been realizing and thinking about so much lately is how that's the wrong approach, right? Of course you need to know the parts. I mean, that's important. You gotta know what it's built of. But systems thinking on the other hand is more about the ripple effects when you make changes or adjustments or problems occur, right? Like something is happening to a part and you're asking the question, well, how is that going to impact everything around it. And this is far less intuitive, right? So for instance, let's say like, um, to give you like an easy way to think about this, let's say you get a flat tire, right? So if you have a flat tire, that's obviously going to impact the way that the car drives. 
So which means you're not gonna be able to drive the car until you get it fixed. And if you can't get it fixed and you can't drive it, therefore you can't go to work, you can't go to school, right? Those are all very logical. And those are all based on reductionist thinking. It's saying this, therefore this, therefore that, therefore this makes total sense. Systems thinking on the other hand is where you're going, okay, well, if you can't go to work, how's that going to affect and impact your colleagues? How's that going to impact your managers? How's that going to impact the company as a whole? How is that, like, you can start going with this and these are far less logical, right? Or if there is logic to it, it's very difficult to parse out and figure out on your own. This to me is the hidden power of anatomy because when you spend so much time learning it and you learn all these parts, you then get to be able to play with it and see, okay, well, if it impacts this, then it impacts that, then it impacts this. And all of a sudden before you know it, everything starts to spread out. And, and then you're starting to see greater consequences. Sometimes they're good consequences, but you're seeing the greater consequences of problems here or adjustments there. My point is simply, I think anatomy, learning it, can reshape the way you think and start to turn you into a systems thinker the longer you spend in that space. Now, I want to be very clear. This is not unique to anatomy. You can do this with a whole bunch of other disciplines. However, what makes anatomy so great is that it's also teaching you about your body. It's that gateway science that we talked about. It's, you know, it leads you to physiology, to nutrition, to kinesiology. Basically, what you're ending up with is you're learning about yourself, you're developing personal accountability, and you're learning how to reduce, identify parts, and then you're learning how the parts and adjustments and issues with those parts can impact systems as a whole. I fundamentally believe that a human anatomy is the most important science that anyone can ever learn. It doesn't mean, right, you have the most knowledge. It doesn't mean it's the hardest or the easiest science. It doesn't really mean anything beyond what I just said. I think like in terms of personal accountability, being able to, you know, take accountability for your health and your actions and things about your body and just understanding who you are at a more fundamental level. When you add that with the systems thinking, I don't, know how any other aspect of science can beat it you know maybe maybe someone else has a different opinion on this but that is my honest opinion learning human anatomy i believe can change your life it can help you make better decisions in pretty much every facet of life that doesn't that doesn't mean you're going to always make good decisions it doesn't mean that your life is going to always improve dramatically it's not like you be you learn anatomy and all of a sudden you're just like this superhero. <laughs> you know, it's not what that's not what I'm saying. It's more so that it's conditioning the mind to make better decisions. To think things through, not necessarily logically as we would classically define it, as much as it's just I'm thinking about it in a more systemic way, but also understanding the parts. It's powerful. It's powerful. And I've been seeing it firsthand with my students these past few months. And I just can't stop thinking about it. So I just I just wanted to jump on here. Like I woke up this morning, I was like, I just need to talk about this and see if anybody else feels the same way. I encourage you, every single one of you, learn some anatomy. Experience the gateway effect and see the power of it firsthand because I really do, really, really do believe that it can change your life.